Hey guys, into the stars. And the Aryan race are the bees. We finally reached the bottom of this rabbit hole. And this will be a more in-depth video. I want you to reference the links that you see here at the top. And always, always double check this information for yourself. So the Merovingians is the root of the Aryan race. And I'm going to show that to you. Their emblem was the bee. And the Aryan society is the only alien society we know of that is connected with bees and beehives. In recent time, Napoleon revived the bee as an emblem for royalty. And because the Swedish royal family are descendants of the Napoleon bloodline, they use the bees as well. Now, figures 1, 3, and 1, 4 show the Merovingian kings as bees, as you can see here. The emblem of the Merovingian kings. And here is a bee hive or bee abdomen encrusted with gold fleur de lis. This could be symbolized as a beehive, a bee, or a pupa. The French Merovingian kings used bees as one of their sacred devices. So this makes sense of why they would be worshipping these bees. There are also other potential connections between Orion and the bees that we can find with little research. The old Mayans, for example, the ones who created the old Mayan calendar, honored Amuzen Kab, a god of bee and honey, also worshipped by the Mayans. Now, a lot of these ancient cultures, you guys, that were advanced, were descendants of the Nephilim. This is the only way they knew this knowledge. This is knowledge stolen from heaven. Same thing in the ancient Near East and the Aegean cultures. The bees are highly respected and sacred, just like they were in Egypt in ancient times. So now we're getting a more complete picture. This is the winged bee goddess. Of course, there's the bee abdomen there. Bees were also an emblem of Potnia, ancient Greece, the Minoan Mycenaean mistress, also referred to as the pure mother bee. Moreover, priestesses worshipping Artemis and Demeter were called bees. And now we have a direct connection with Orion. Now, does this Orion ring a bell? Remember, the ancient culture that was attached to CERN in the city of Petra. And that culture, remember, worshipped the daughters of an Arabian god. And those daughters, one of them was said to have been part of the belt of Orion. Artemis was by many considered the goddess and Orion the male hunter was Artemis hunting companion. In Rome she was known as Diana from whom Princess Diana got her name. After the princess death there was a lot of speculation whether Princess Diana was a reincarnation of the goddess Diana. Her Spencer family line is linked to royalty and we're going to go over that royalty in the next section of this video. And it's fascinating, and it all links directly back to this. Artemis can be linked to Turkey. In Artemis, we have found our most renowned bee patronesses. As the goddess of nature and, and the hunt, forests, hills, rocks, and rivers, she oversaw the home territory of wild bees. A particularly fascinating part of her history is her temple community in Iona at Ephesus, today's Turkey. Some believe it was a matriarchal community of beekeeping priestesses that worshipped Artemis. In her Ephesus form, she's depicted covered in breast or egg-like carvings that for a beekeeper can only resemble the cells queen bees are born from in the hive. At her feet are two omphala stones. Now we're going to go into a little bit more detail here. And we're going to show also how many of the elites, most of them in, that are in power, are all part of the Merovingian bloodline. This is one article that talks about John McCain be, being descended from Robert the Bruce as well as Sarah Palin and their roots. How is it that all these people are related to one another? Because it's all fixed. It's all staged, you guys. We're given the, uh, the illusion of choice, but all these people are put forward and they're all loyal to their bloodlines. Um, reference this article for the bloodline proof of these two individuals that were that are in power that have come to power and they put on this whole stage for us to make us feel like we have a choice 
but they've already been chosen long in advance. So the point here, you guys, is all of these people that are in power are connected through family bloodlines. You and I, normal people, don't have a shot at being president of the United States or even a senator, okay? All of these people are related. The few people they let through are bought or written off for their own means so that they can say, look, this person isn't of our bloodline, but then those people are fully controlled. Anyway, let's skip over to this website, the Merovingians, the Unholy Grail. And this is very interesting. This links the Merovingians with Atlantis. The race of beings from Atlantis and even before was the generator of many seed lines of which still exist today. We have the Cain seed line, which originates from the union between Eve and Satan. Between these, we have the tares that the Bible speaks of. Cain was the original witch of these clans, Wiccans, Pagans, and of course Druids. The traces of blood from these, which started this millenniums ago, still exist within these factions because they interbreed with one another is to keep power of the blood going. Be not deceived that the blood does not have power. Now check this out you guys, this is pretty crazy. From antiquity until recent days who have claimed to be descendants of Israel's tribe of Judah from the King of David and Yeshua. Currently, the British House of Windsor and the Scottish House of Stuart claim their blood came from these royal tribes. Both the houses of royalty are both places of which the occult and Jewish practices are held. The Merovingian bloodline, which we've been talking about, held their legitimacy, falls on the marriage of the two royal bloodlines. When Spencer Diana married Prince Charles, it completed a messianic dynasty that has gone, that has down through the ages been conceived to bring forth a king which will claim to be of Yeshua. The facade goes on to tell of a final one who will rule in the name of the Most High God. The line supposedly began with the marriage of Yeshua and Mary Magdalene, and this unison brought forth a, a son called Merovi, a name also later given to the first Merovingian king. But others tell of the birth of a daughter named Sarah, while others call her Tamar. Tamar is an ultra secret of society. For those who task it to protect the Merovingian descendants, Mary was said to have been spirited away to. Egypt until Sarah was born and then when Sarah reached 12 they traveled to the Languatic region of South France and lived among the clans which would later be known as the Cathars. Ring a bell? Catholic Cathars? Others tell of Mary landing upon the marshy shores of Glastonbury, England where the very first Christian church outside of the Holy Land was established and where Yeshua was said to have spent many years of his use. These fanciful claims all derive from an underground stream of astrologers Kabbalists, necromancers, and alchemists, all lies, along with the elite family and secret societies, such as the Order of Druids, Guardians of the Grail. So they're trying to establish legitimacy as, as the Christ, but we all know it's the Antichrist. And this is all falling in line with a lot of the stuff that we already know, you guys. We're just seeing it here, again. So the knowledge was passed down from generation to, de to generation in secret until the time is full and the world large ready to receive it. But let's forget not that these stories have been laid down and attributed to anchor the false history, the false history of the fictitious royal lineage leading to Christ. This may be the great deception. It says here, the Merovius or Merovingian bloodlines of ancient France, whose bloodlines extend to the royal England and Scotland, are claimed to have been spawned from two fathers and one mother who swam out of the sea whilst bearing a child and came back impregnated with a reptilian sea beast child. Okay. Merovius derives from the French word mer, meaning sea, and vir, meaning werewolf or dragon. We've covered werewolves on this channel. We've covered sea creatures on this channel. Later here, it also links the Merovingians to the tribe of Dan, which we've also covered on this channel. And Neptune. The beast Neptune was worshipped in classical antiquity as the Roman god Neptune and as Poseidon in Greek. This is our entire journey that we've been on you guys over the past year. We started with Neptune. We worked our way down and we're finding the roots and now we're at the bees and the bees have brought us full circle. Now we must remember there is always some truth mixed in in everything and our job is to find it. Now it says here, um, 
The term honey in the Bible would be occult symbolism for Orion as well. And we find lots of Freemasonic free symbols that are honeycomb symbols as well. Now this is interesting. We talked a lot about Samson and the lion mentioned in the story of Samson in the Bible. And it notes here that the male lion has a mane, of course. The kings of old especially the Merovingian kings, knew that there was magic power in long hair. This goes back to the story of Samson. Samson in the Holy Scripture is an example, which is what we just talked about, who lost his great powers when he lost his long hair. And of course, the lion here on earth is another symbol of royalty. You can see the impressive statues of lions guarding the entrances to royal castles, and are also prominent on shields and the royal family banners. And here's an example, of course. We've seen this time and time again. And finally, you guys, to wrap this up, the Nephilim were banished to the center of the earth for disobeying God by mating with the daughters of men and teaching them forbidden arts. They are the fathers of the Merovingians, you guys. The arts that they were taught were the making of mirrors, shields, breastplates, armor, swords, eyeshadow, dies, antimony, all of these things were taught by the fallen angels to the Nephilim descendants and then to man. And this is listed in the book of Enoch. Here it also goes on to talk about the Merovingian claims of angelic ancestry. And it's hard to not call these races demonic. The Hebrew word for Nephil is probably translated fallen ones and refers to the offspring of fallen angels who mated with human women on Mount Hermon in the land of Canaan. Sodom and Gomorrah were Canaanite settlements that practiced cult prostitution in conjunction with their fertility rites. The Canaanite territory of northern Israel was later occupied by the tribe of Dan and we've covered all of the tribe of Dan on our channel and how it descended out of this area. They worshipped Baal, Pan, and involved in fertility rites. The Merovingians are also the offspring of the tribe of Dan, which intermarried with the Canaanite Tuatha de, de, de Danan, also known as the Dragon Lords of Anu, because they were the offspring of the fallen angels, Anunnaki. The tribe of Dan, said to have separated from Moses, may have been among the mixed multitude that left Egypt with the Israelites and fell a lusting okay there's a lot of information here you guys but this I believe is the truth it fits in with the journey that we've been on here are the 12 tribes of Israel when God dispersed the northern tribes of Israel for their wickedness the tribe of Dan migrated to Greece and we tracked this migration on the, on the island of Sidonia Many of you will remember that video. And later to France and the British Isles, where they established pagan priesthoods and royal dynasties of the demonic bloodline, which is still in control today, the Queen of England, which is what all of this is about. The number 88, her birthday, the B's, the 8's, it is all coming together. Now, the question is, what do we choose to believe? Do we believe the Bible? which says that Satan is the ruler of this world, which would mean that everybody in positions of power are ruling this world, are from this bloodline. Or do we want to believe what they're trying to make us believe? And that is, we live in a democratic world, and everybody has a chance at helping to make a difference. I choose to believe the Bible, you guys. As I said, Come to these sites, read this information, decide for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Don't take the site's word for it. Do your own research. The truth shall set you free. And everything that was hidden will be revealed according to the Bible. Take care and be safe, you guys.